Hopefully by now we have established that we are free from religious legalism. Hopefully I have also anticipated and answered the arguments that legalists themselves would make. However, in our bid to escape legalism, we really must be careful that we don't shoot right past freedom and end up in the equal but opposite error of satanic license. It's a mistake that many in the early church made. You mean we're free from the law of Moses? Does that mean there's no law at all now? Do we live under lawlessness? Can we just go and do what we want? Many follow that same thought pattern today. They think that freedom from the law means freedom to sin. In fact, I think it's fair to say that from the 20th century onwards, a general feeling grew in the Western church that grace is basically there to be abused. That because Jesus' blood has a limitless capacity to atone for our sin, we are pretty much free to go rack up the biggest debt we possibly can without consequence. It's like a daughter being given her rich dad's credit card and thinking, well, since there's no limit on what I can spend, I might as well go big. With a limitless tab and assurance of heaven, people can feel there's no real reason to pursue moral living, that it's kind of optional. And yes, Jesus doesn't like what we do, but he's too kind and forgiving to hold it against us, and it's impossible to lose our salvation anyway. We said a prayer one Sunday at church to ask Jesus into our hearts, so our passing to heaven is secured. So let's just go out and get into bed with strangers, get addicted to porn, engage in violence and drunkenness, and sure, we know it's bad and we shouldn't be doing it, but hey, we're human, and at the end of the day, it's not going to affect our salvation. Jesus will cover it for me. It's not uncommon, therefore, to see people purposefully engaging in licentious and immoral behaviour while seeing no contradiction in simultaneously calling themselves a Christian. Now, like I say, this isn't a new mistake. The same thing happened in the early church. Paul addresses the mindset in Romans 6 by asking the rhetorical question. So since God's grace has set us free from the law, does this mean we can go on sinning? In other words, can we just do what we want now? Then he answers saying, of course not. Don't you realize that whatever you choose to obey becomes your master? You can choose sin which leads to death, or you can choose to obey God and receive his approval. So once we have established that we have freedom from the law, we can now choose to use that freedom in one of two ways. We can use it selflessly loving God and others, following the law of Christ, or to selfishly love ourselves, following the law of Satan. Ultimately, the route you choose reveals who your true master is. Galatians 5.17 says, The Spirit gives us desires that are opposite from what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other and your choices are never free from this conflict. Our sinful nature tells us to go our own way and the Spirit of Christ tells us to go His way. These are the only two paths in life. Jesus called it the choice between the broad road that leads to hell or the narrow road that leads to eternal life. Paul urges Christians to choose the right path saying, you have been called to live in freedom, not freedom to satisfy your sinful nature, but freedom to serve one another in love. Imagine a prisoner has just been set free from jail and has been handed his freedom. He can now use that freedom to live well or to go back to his life of crime. The Bible says that the way we use our freedom proves whose kingdom we belong to, Jesus or Satan. If you are genuinely following Jesus, you will use your freedom to serve one another in love. If you are following Satan, you will use your freedom to satisfy your selfish, sinful nature. Paul describes in some detail what happens if we ignore the Spirit and choose the wrong path, saying, When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, your lives will produce these evil results. Sexual immorality, impure thoughts, eagerness for lustful pleasure, idolatry, participation in demonic activities, hostility, quarrelling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, divisions, the feeling that everyone is wrong except those in your own little group, envy, drunkenness, wild parties and other kinds of sin. Let me tell you again as I have before that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. People who use their freedom to follow the do-what-you-want philosophy are actually following Satan, so they will exhibit these undesirable traits. And note the stark warning at the end of the verse. They will not inherit the kingdom of God. If you walk Satan's path, you will meet Satan's end. Hebrew says, Dear friends, if we deliberately keep on sinning after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there is no longer any sacrifice that will cover these sins. Jesus' blood sacrifice does not cover sustained and deliberate sinning amongst those who know the truth. Paul confirms this to the Romans saying, 
but he will pour out his anger and wrath on those who live for themselves. Living for yourself is to live for Satan. Your actions prove who you belong to.